Hello people and welcome to a card review about Emery, Lurker of the Lock, a mono blue 1-2 Merfolk Wizard for only 3 mana. However, her first ability reads, for each artifact you control, this spell will cost 1 less generic to cast, so in general, you're just gonna pay 1 blue mana for her. When Emery comes into play, you will put the top 4 cards of your library into your graveyard, and you can tap this Merfolk Wizard to target an artifact in your graveyard, and this turn only, you're allowed to cast that card. Now, there is an obvious combo with the Mono Blue Mirian Spy, a 3 mana cost 1 free flying drone. Whenever you cast an artifact spell, you may untap target creature. So, for example, with a card like Lotus Pedal, you cast Lotus Pedal, Mirian Spy will trigger to untap your commander. You sacrifice the Lotus Pedal, it'll go into your graveyard, and you have 1 blue mana in your mana pool. Tap Emery. Target Lotus Petal, cast it from your graveyard. Now, Mirian Spy will trigger and untap Emery. You can now sacrifice the Lotus Petal again, and you have infinite mana. There is also another alternative. You can also use the Lion's Eye Diamond to also gain infinite mana, looping Lion's Eye Diamond up and down forever. After you have infinite mana, you can draw your entire deck with a card like Mind Stone. You can also do infinite damage with a card like Walking Ballista. Just cast Walking Ballista X equal to infinite. You can also return your entire graveyard up to your hand forever with Codex Shredder. In general, all that you need is this, your commander in play not suffering from summoning sickness. Mirian Spy at the ready, one of these two cards to help you generate infinite mana, and then an outlet to win from the infinite mana. And it is worth to mention that all the artifact cards can actually exist inside your graveyard to assemble this combo. Now, her secondary ability and her third ability together perform something of a functional card drawing ability. In general, she's going to assemble something of a mono blue artifact graveyard deck. I also believe she can consistently enter somewhere between turn 1 and turn 2. If you have a Mox Diamond and two islands in your hand, you have an Emery on turn 1. The same thing with a Crow Mox and the same thing with a Mana Crypt. But also, if you have, let's say, a Mox Amber and let's go with a random whatever zero costing artifact like Ursa's Bubble or maybe an a Mishra's Bubble, or any form of combination of two artifacts on CM0, CMC, and an island, then you're gonna have your commander into play at turn 1. And when she enters play, she fills up your graveyard, and then she uses that graveyard to fuel more power. So this is definitely a commander that gets going quickly. When it comes to interaction, which is a must-have, the most logical choice are interactive artifacts, stacks artifacts, like Piffing Needle. Name a card, and that card can't be activated, and you can bring this into play from your graveyard. The same thing you have here, Graft Digger's Cage, another version of Piffing Needle, Sorcerer's Spyglass, you have Torpor Orb, you have Phyrexian Revoker, and something that isn't an artifact, but I would like to mention, back to basic. We're playing Mono Blue, we're probably gonna contain a lot of islands in our deck. So back to basic, it's gonna suit fine inside this deck. That brings us to Ursa, Lord High Artificer, another mono blue commander. They are quite similar. I would actually express myself and say this, they are same same but different. Both mono blue commanders will be playing cards like Winter Orb, but here comes the difference. Ursa can actually tap the Winter Orb for mana, and also he's able to shut it down, breaking parity against it, while Emery has to suffer from the Winter Orb effect. But the Merfolk Wizard from Scotland's Loch Ness can actually revive the Winter Orb if your opponents destroy it. So, if Winter Orb is an amazing card in the current situation and it's locking down all of your free opponents, then Emery can make sure that the artifact sticks around and keeps coming back. I would also like to mention that Ursa's activated card drawing ability is a little bit mediocre, because it's random. If you're not drawing a random card, you're exiling a random card. You could accidentally exile a land, and you can't play more lands for turn, and you could also accidentally exile a counterspell, and then you spend 5 mana to do nothing. I've actually played against Ursa quite a bunch, and the only time I see Ursa activate his ability is when he has infinite mana. So which one of these two are actually the stronger? I'm gonna go for Ursa.
The reason why I think Ursa is the stronger between the two is the power to shut down artifacts like Winter Orb and Static Orb, etc, etc. That is a really powerful effect Ursa has. A power few can match. In the end, Emery as a commander could be cool, could be functional, draws a bunch of cards, comes into action quite fast. We will have to see. I am not super convinced she's gonna be a dominating force from the depths of the sea. But what about Emery inside the 99? This is actually where I think she could shine. The Loch Ness Queen is actually quite similar to an already existing boss, Silas Ren, Seeker Adept. But also Muldrotta, the Grave Tide. Let's actually begin with talking about the Elemental Avatar. So this Muldrotta is a 6 mana cost really expensive commander, and that is something to actually think about. Now Muldrotta is doing close to the same thing as Emery, casting artifacts and, well, permanents, lands, creatures, planeswalkers, enchantments, etc, etc, all that value stuff from the graveyard. But Emery is a cheaper version of Muldrotta, so before you're able to actually cast Muldrotta, and if Muldrotta is getting killed all the time, you can actually use Emery as a semi version of value, doing the same thing as Muldrotta, but only for artifacts. They really go hand by hand, the Muldrotta deck is quite focused at filling your graveyard with cards so you can utilize your Muldrotta to a great extent, and Emery is also helping you fill your graveyard with more cards. Alright, let's actually move on and look at the Seeker Adept. Let's team him up with this Boros Double Strike guy. You could also team him up with Akiri Line Slinger, but for the combo reason, I'm gonna say go for this guy. Now, let's actually showcase a card. Let's see if I can make everything fit. The Time Machine, two mana cost, one black and one blue. Stab it, sacrifice five artifacts and take an extra turn after this one. Now, this combo is a little bit weird, wonky and gimmicky slow, but the goal is to produce five artifacts each turn to gain infinite turns, which is pretty cool lore-wise because... This guy is a master at time magic and taking extra turns. He's a time walker. So I've heard. But the game plan is pretty straightforward and simple. Use this guy and this guy, the double striker. Give this guy double strike, hit face, double time. Target two different artifacts inside your graveyard, cast them, and now you produce two artifacts by, by turn from your partner commanders. Emery could help out here. She's filling your graveyard with artifacts that this guy could revive and she could also revive them. But when you're trying to go for infinite turns, she's one of the pathways to assemble five artifacts per turn. So if you have these two commanders in play, you have Emery in play, you're producing three artifacts per turn now. You need to produce two more artifacts per turn somehow and when you do, you have infinite turns. Either you're producing artifact tokens, or you are re reanimating more artifacts somehow. Like I said, it's a gimmicky game plan, but Emery could be the card to help out, assemble and make this deck good. But in general, I actually think Emery could go inside a lot of different decks, as long as that deck is focused at artifacts and graveyards. The reason you wanna include her, by the way, should be because you wanna increase your card drawing and grindy potential. This is important, I want you to listen now. If you have a deck that is focused at artifacts and graveyard, you might consider Emery for that deck. But if your deck doesn't need more grind, doesn't need more card draw, then I don't think Emery is a good card for your deck. If your deck is weak at winning fast, then I think Emery is the wrong choice for your deck. Here I have the perfect card to showcase what I'm actually talking about. Tassiger, 
the Golden Fang. This is a commander that is heavily focused at filling his graveyard. This is also a commander that has a bunch of artifacts, mana rocks, etc. etc. He could actually build in a, a lot of different varieties of ways. He could actually fill his deck with more artifacts than what a normal Tessager deck actually does. Therefore, he could actually slot in and play Emery as a card drawing way and a card that will fill his graveyard more. In the end though, Tassiger of the Golden Fang is quite good at actually drawing cards. So what Emery is gonna do, Tassiger already does. In general, what I think you should include in your Tassiger deck is more ways to control the game, make sure you don't lose the game, and ways to win fast. But here comes the deck construction headache. If you actually think that your Tassiger deck needs more grind, needs more card draw, then I think Emery could be an option for your Tassiger deck. My final review for this Loch Ness monster is that I actually think she is playable. I actually think she can find her way in in some CDH decks when she fits. I actually think she's gonna be a semi-competitive commander, but in general, this is an okay card, and only for one blue mana. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what I do and you wanna support me, consider sharing my videos or even checking out my Patreon page. Also, purchasing cards from the TCG Players website using the affiliate link down below will also help the channel grow. So a big thank you to all of you.